Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 1. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 1. Come on. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanness in her. Come on. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. And do what? And send her out of his house. Read. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. Now, go to Matthew chapter 19 real quick. All right. I want you all to pay close attention. All right. We're going to go to Matthew the 19th chapter. Okay. Matthew chapter 19 and read verse uh, 7. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 7. Come on. They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? So we just read in the law, Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter. It says, why did Moses allow that to happen? Now we're going to get the understanding of Deuteronomy 24. Remember, the brother said he found some uncleanness in his wife, right? Does that mean that she was guilty of something? Not necessarily. Okay, read on. Verse 8, he saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts. Read that again. He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts. Come on. Suffered you to put away your wives. Uh-huh. But from the beginning, it was not so. Right. So it was, a, it was never supposed to be okay to divorce. First and foremost, it was never okay. Now. Read on. Verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. What is fornication? I want to see hands. What is fornication? Let me hear Brother James. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, sexual sin. Like there it is. That's it. A sexual sin. Where can we read about these sexual sins at? Simon. Shalom, uh, Leviticus uh, 18 chapter. Right, in Leviticus the 18th chapter. That's where we can read the sexual sins. All right, so Matthew 19 and 9, read that. Matthew 19, verse 9. Come on. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. So let me ask you, you have to ask this. When is the only, what is the only reason that you could put away your wife for? Who knows? Eleazar. The scripture says for fornication. All right. So remember, fornication means what? Sexual or sin. Sexual sin, correct? Yes. So when you are in a marriage and fornication takes place, what is it called? Adultery. It's called adultery. That is correct. It's called adultery. Very good. Read verse 9 all the way through. Verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication and shall marry another committed adultery and whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery read that part again and i say unto you whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication and shall marry another committed adultery read and whoso marrieth her which is put away does commit adultery. Who can explain that latter part? Uh, and tell us. 
Shalom leadership. Shalom. If a y young lady is being put away from a, from her, her husband, if they if she get a divorce and she goes off and marry again, whoever marry her is committing adultery also. Right, right. So if there's any unclean in that marriage and they split up under Christ, okay, that uncleanness under Christ is what? Okay, I'll help you out. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 24 real quick. We're going to read it down to verse 4. Then we're going to come back to Matthew 19. I'm going to ask the same question. I don't want any confusion. Deuteronomy 24. Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 1. Come on. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement. And give it in her hand uh -huh. and send her out of his house. So in this situation, it's not necessarily talking. It's not it's not talking about adultery. Read on. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. How do we know it's not talking about adultery? What was the punishment for adultery? What was the punishment for adultery? Yeah. It was death. So we know that's not talking about adultery. OK, remember, this is under Moses. He added this because of the what? Hardness of their hearts. All right, read on. Verse 3. Come on. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorce. So if she hookups with another brother and then he says, you know what? I'm tired of you too and writes a bill of divorce. Read. And giveth it in her hand and sendeth her out of his house. Uh -huh. Or if the latter husband die which took her to be his wife. Watch this. Her former husband. The former husband was the husband in verse what? Verse 1. The original husband. Okay? Read verse 4. Her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. Read that again. Her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. All right. Now let's go back to Matthew. 19. Okay, and read it again. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 8. Come on. He's nine, verse nine. Verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. So my question was this. What is the uncleanness under Christ? It's fornication. Nothing else. You can't put away your wife for anything else except what? Except what? Right. Read on. And shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. All right. So, question for you. We're going to go on. So, if... No, let's do this. Read Jeremiah 3. Then I'll pose the question to everybody. Jeremiah 3, 1. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 1. Wait till everybody get it, please. All right, read what you got. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 1. Come on. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Uh-huh. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? When it says land, what is it talking about? Huh? The woman. It's talking about the woman. Read it again. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be po greatly polluted? Right. So it's doing what? It's quoting Deuteronomy 24 and which verse? Four. Deuteronomy 24 and four. Because the former husband, can she go back to him? No, because she's now what? She's defied or, or polluted or unclean. Okay, read this all the way through. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. So it's a parable, okay, or similitude. He's comparing the law with the nation of Israel. Because Israel, how did we play the harlot? Let's see. How do we do it? Uh, Stefan, how did Israel play the harlot? 
Shalom leadership. Shalom. Uh, spiritual fornication. Spiritual fornication by following what? Uh, d- diverse idols. Yes, idols. Exactly. We get a chance to return. Okay? But according to the law, that sister, let me ask, can that sister ever remarry? Let me hear you. Let me hear my brother right here. Here's the mic. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, no, sir. Shalom. Okay, you say no. Okay. Who agrees with what Jabez just said? Okay. Who does not agree? Okay, now, uh, Eliezer, let me hear why you don't agree. In the scripture in, I believe, 1 Corinthians, it says when her husband is dead, then she's able to remarry. Okay, what scripture is that? Don't know about here. Uh, okay. All right, First Corinthians seven thirty nine. Okay, First Corinthians chapter seven verse thirty nine. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter seven and verse thirty nine. All right, let's wait till everybody gets it. We're gonna touch everything going on in this congregation. Okay, read what you got. First Corinthians chapter seven and verse thirty nine. Come on. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. You see. Now, you are right in a sense. You feel what I'm saying? If the husband outlive her, yeah, she can never remarry. But read it again. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. Come on. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will. Only in the Lord. Only what? Only in the Lord. Which is going to lead me to another topic later on. But I'll just give you a little hint. If you are fellowshipping in this camp, and you leave, and then you come back with a husband that isn't in the truth, that's called fornication. If you a brother that's with us, and you come up in here with a wife that ain't in the truth, but you try to make her into the truth, that's called fornication. Straight up. We can tell you that straight. That means you's a hoe. Hey, it is what it is. That means you are a hoe. Because you ain't doing it according to the scriptures. I ain't talking about the acronym hoe. I'm talking about the real hoe. And that's thus saith the Lord. If you got a problem, I don't give a damn. Because we are not going to make this into a whorehouse. That's not what we're going to do. Give me Deuteronomy 2317. This is not going to turn into a whorehouse. You're going to get exposed. That's what's going to happen. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 17. Come on. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Give me the uh, Leviticus 19.29. Give me that one. Because y'all got to think. If we as the judges sat here and allowed this stuff to happen, what do you think is going to happen to us? Huh? Uh, let me hear Aaron. I can't, I can't hear what y'all saying. What you think if we if we don't step up and affor- enforce the law? What do you think is gonna happen? Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Um, if we don't force the enforce the law, then it's gonna be a house full of sin. It's gonna be just like the Christian church. It's gonna be just like the Christian church. Exactly right. All right, read that. Leviticus chapter nineteen and verse twenty nine. Come on. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Read. Lest the land fall to whoredom. And the land become full of wickedness. Right. We're not about to let this become full of wickedness. We're not going to allow it. So when we see things going on in the camp, we have to address them. Is that understood? All right. All right. Um, Because sometimes we try to spare people. We're not, I'm, I'm learning from my mistakes. I'm not going to spare nobody. Because what's going to happen? When you try to spare somebody, guess what? Hey, hey, did you see, what he, you, see, you see what he did? You see how he threw him out? But he didn't even say why. I'm telling you why. I'm telling you why right now. So if you got a problem with it, hey, I cleaned my hands with that thing. That's not going to come back on me. Read it. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. Uh-huh. Now I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions. Divisions, divisions. Adultery, that causes division in marriage and in the body. Read that all the way through. Verse 17. Come on. Now I beseech you, 
Brethren, mark them which cause division. The Bible told me today to mark those that are part of this congregation or that were a part of this congregation to do what? Mark them. Do what? Mark them. If you have a Sharpie and you have a white piece of paper, if you take the cap off and you make a dot on that paper, is it obvious to see? That would be an example of a mark. Meaning what? Everybody needs to know what's going on or where that is or how to spot it out. Does that everybody understand that? All right, read it again from the top. Verse 17. Come on. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. Contrary to what? Contrary to the doctrine. What is the doctrine, my brothers? Huh? Who has the precept? Call it out. All right, we have to read these scriptures. We have to. So everybody can understand, hey, this, is, this has nothing to do with me. We are doing the Lord's business. That's what we're doing. We're doing God's business. Give me Proverbs 4, 2. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4 and verse 2. All right. Now, what are we covering? We're learning what doctrine is according to the Bible. Okay? Read this. Proverbs 4 and verse 2. Uh-huh. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Do what? Forsake ye not my law. Don't forsake God's laws. That's what all of this is about. That's why all of us are in here today. Because we want to keep God's commandments. Who wants to keep God's commandments in here, man? That's why we here. We trying to get our lives right. Now, brothers and sisters, we going to make mistakes. But, hey, understand Understand, why do you think Genesis through Deuteronomy was written? Because God already knew he was going to do these things. And he told us when these things happen, this is the judgment on how you deal with it. That's what y'all got to understand. We got to move our emotions out of the way and deal with the Bible. Y'all understand that? Yes, All right, read that again for us and then go back to Romans 16. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 2. Come on. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Now, I want y'all to keep that in your minds. Now go to Romans 16 and 17. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. Come on. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine. Contrary to God's laws. The Bible says mark them. Come on. Which ye have learned. Uh-huh. And avoid them. Do what? Avoid them. Go to their house. Avoid them. Call them. Avoid them. I didn't give the order. God gave the order. Does everybody believe that? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. We've had this situation before in this congregation. We've had it. And then people want to coddle those who got kicked out. Okay, we're not being merciful anymore because being merciful gets us nowhere. I've learned that when the order goes out, when the law goes out, it's either you do it or you don't. There is no, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a look. No, no, no. We're not doing that no more. Those days are over. Okay, so God's word has spoken to has been spoken. Y'all heard it. So if it happens, don't look crazy. Don't look crazy. Don't you do it. Drop that. Give me uh, first, no, 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 give me Leviticus 21 and 7. All right, we're hitting both of those together, the adultery and the fornication. We got a lot of issues in this body. Okay, Leviticus 21 and 7. You can't go out of the body and bring somebody out in, uh, of the world in here and try to change them into a righteous sister or righteous brother. The scripture said, read 1 Corinthians 7 again so it can stick. The scripture tells you who you can marry and who you can't. That's what the Bible tells you. Watch this. Which verse? 39. 1 come, Corinthians come chapter 7 and verse 39. And I want y'all to write these down. That's why you can see I ain't going fast like normal. No, y'all need to hear this. You need to understand it. Okay. Read this. Verse 39. Come on. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, 
She is at liberty to marry to whom she will, only in the Lord. All right, what stuck out in that verse? What stuck out in that verse? Uh, let me hear you say it. The uh, last words, only in the Lord. Exactly, exactly. The scripture's telling you that. Now, give me Leviticus 21 and 7. The scripture is telling you, you can only marry those who what? Believe. Those who keep the commandments. Give me uh, Isaiah 5 and 20 real quick. Give me Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 real quick. Let's see what God says to you if you try to turn a, uh, a hoe into a housewife. Let's see what God says. Read that. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Come on. Woe unto them that call evil good. It says what? Woe unto them that call evil good. Woe means what? Woe means what? Destruction. Destruction. Read it again. Woe unto them that call evil good. Come on. And good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. Right. Wise in their own eyes because God says, hey, destruction coming if you try to do that. Then it also says, woe if you're wise in your own eyes because a lot of brothers and sisters, we're going to get to that too. A lot of sisters will get counsel, but they think they think that they know better or they think that they got it all figured out. Brothers do it, too. But the Bible saying what? Read it again. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. Wise in their own eyes. Hey, I'm going to tell you all what's going to help everybody in this truth is remember, you don't know nothing. You feel what I'm saying? You're babies. That's what you got to remember. When you can walk like that, because when you think that you're something, what do you think is going to happen? Huh? I said, what do you think is going to happen? Huh? You're going to fall. That's what's going to happen. You will fall. It's not if. It's not maybe. It's you will fall. That's going to happen. So, the best thing to do is Hebrews 13 and 7. Hey, I'll tell you this. Don't, hey, if somebody called me for counsel and I tell you what it is, don't tell me what, oh, I heard this, oh, this scripture, that. Hey, hey, don't reach out to me because apparently you don't trust the process. I'm going to tell you straight up. Don't be calling my phone trying to teach me. I'm going to tell you straight. Hebrews 13 and 7. Read what you got. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 7. Come on. Remember them which have the rule over you. The Bible speaking to us right here. It said, remember those who have rule over you. Who's the king? It's Christ. You understand that? His father which is in heaven. Here on earth we got the bishop, the deacons, the captains, the officers, the soldiers, and the brothers and sisters. In this camp, who is the leader of the camp? Read the verse again. Remember them which have the rule over you. Come on. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. Hit their own words. Which spoken unto you the word of God. What they thought in their mind. Spoken unto you the word of God. Read. Whose faith follow. Whose what? Whose faith follow. Follow. What is the Bible? Somebody explain that. Somebody explain that scripture for us. And tell us. Because what's happening, and I see it. What hap what's happening in the nation Israel? Israel think that this is like some, some popular or high school type of stuff. When I came in, bro, it wasn't like this, man. I'm going to tell you straight up. It was due to commandments to get the hell out, man. All of this worrying about people's feelings has got us nowhere. I'm telling you straight. Brothers come in here half acid, not serious about the work. Why are we sparing brothers and sisters' feelings for? 
because we're doing you a disservice. I am not going to be a part of that. I'm going to tell you straight. I'm going to tell you about yourself because that's my job. I'm going to tell you, hey, fix that or you're going to die. I'm going to tell you those things because that's what somebody who loves you would do. I'm not going to sit there and patronize you and coddle you. It's going to be, it's not going to be okay. Christ is coming back. I'm going to tell y'all straight up, it ain't going to be all right. And a lot of us is going to die. That's what's coming. Read it or explain it. Yes, sir. It says, remember those who have ruled over you and who have spoken unto you the word of God whose face follows. Meaning, um, we have to listen to our leadership because they are speaking the word of God and they believe the word of God. They have faith Let me in say what something the word too. of God. Let me say something too because I've been in your seats. I've been in your seats. Now check this out, man. I don't want to scream and yell, but sometimes our people just need to hear that to get shaken up a little bit. But I want y'all to remember one thing. You got to think, and this is for you. This is for everybody in this seat. You got to think. All correction, we'll get the scripture if you need it. All correction ain't going to be calmly. It ain't always going to feel good. But you got to think. If you hear the correction in it and you don't want to take it, then the question is, do you believe at all? That's the thing about it. You say, oh, I don't want to listen to him. Okay, what did the Bible say? That's the thing about it. What did the Bible say? Now, I'm going to let you finish uh, breaking it down, but I want everybody to think about that. What does the Bible say? Go ahead and tell us. Yes, sir. It was saying, um, like our leadership, they believe in the word of God. They follow the word of God. So if they speak in the word of God to us, um, if we're not listening to what he's saying, that we're not listening to what the Bible says. We're not listening to what the Most High God says. They say who faith follows. So their faith is in this word of God. So our faith has to be the same way their faith is. Our faith has to be in the word of God also. And I'll say this too, man. What y'all got to realize, my measure of faith is going to be different than y'all measure of faith. Because I've, I've seen more stuff in the truth than what you've seen. And I'm, not say, I'm just saying that because I'm here. But when I'm around my leadership, you better believe I follow their faith. And I'm not, I ain't going to say nothing to it. I ain't going to disrespect my leadership like that. Because it's my leadership. I chose to allow them to lead over me. So you got to ask, if you're going to question it, why are you here? Why are you here? Because if there ain't no scripture, and I understand what I'm saying. If there's some scriptures that you need clarification on, that's different. I don't want you to feel like you can't ask questions. That's not what I'm saying. But when we're coming with scripture and we're giving you counsel according to the scriptures, and then you just say, well, I heard that. Nah, 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 nah. We're not listening to that. We're not listening to that. Okay. We just want to make sure everybody understands that. Is that understood? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.